and welcome to The Quiet Riot, where we talk film, television, and media with an emphasis on old movies, mysteries, and nostalgic favorites. I'm your host, Ainsley, and sometimes you might hear the pitter-patter of little feet, some snores, and don't mind that any, that is just my sometimes co-host, producer, who likes to sleep on the job, Miss <laughs> Lemon. She's a little French bulldog. She's my baby girl, and she loves to stick around sometimes, so don't worry. This is my first video for the new year. I thought it was perfect to discuss The Apartment. I've been wanting to talk about this film for a while now, but because uh, it is my favorite and I love Billy Wilder, it was just a bit daunting for me to figure out exactly everything that I wanted to talk about. If you have any thoughts on the apartment, please let me know in the comments below. Where you can rent or purchase digitally will be in the description box, as well as different resources that I have pulled from. For several decades, Billy Wilder wrote and or directed several noteworthy films. Film noirs, comedies, and romance make up the majority of Wilder's filmography. In 1960, fresh off the success of Some Like It Hot, the Apartment was released to rave reviews from critics and audiences. It was commercially successful and is often cited as the best of Wilder's work. Whether you agree or not with that statement, there is no doubt that The Apartment is one of his best. Billy Wilder's impact on the film industry as writer, director, and trailblazer is amazing. In today's video, we will be discussing Wilder, the others that made the film, and The Apartment and how it criticizes capitalism. The apartment is authentic in its portrayal of the everyday person going against their own morals to gain further success in their field. To this day, we are expected to desire certain things and without realizing it, many of us go for those things without thinking of the cost. In the apartment, Baxter is getting ahead of those that have worked in the company longer than him by using his place of residence to his advantage. While I do empathize with him and we, the audience, are either supposed to empathize him or see ourselves in him, I do recognize that he is wrong. He is a wrong person in this situation. Billy Wilder and IAL Diamond do not sugarcoat the reality of a Baxter situation. They show life as it is, in all its mess. That's the world of the apartment. All of these characters are playing the game. They lead lives as married working men while engaging in affairs, finding different ways to work up the ladder, and finding ways to become the boss's wife. Baxter is working his way up the ladder, but is slightly allowing his superiors to use his apartment in order to get up the ladder quicker. While McMurray is the villain of the film for a few reasons, Wilder or Diamond do not paint Baxter as the good guy to shelter his bad guy. And that makes the apartment authentic in its portrayal of office politics and how it affects life outside the office walls. The Apartment is a romantic comedy drama directed by Billy Wilder from a script by Wilder and IAL Diamond. The film follows insurance clerk C.C. Baxter, played by Jack Lemmon, whose plans to move up the company lead him to allow his superiors to use his apartment for their extramarital affairs. The film also stars Frederick McMurray, who had previously worked with Wilder on Double Indemnity, and Shirley MacLaine, who would go on to work with the director again in Armella Deuce alongside Lemon. The idea for the apartment originally sprouted from the initial concept that was inspired by the English romantic drama Brief Encounter, released in 1945. But due to the Hayes Code, Wilder was not able to make a film about adultery. Wilder and Diamond partially based the film on a Hollywood scandal in which high-powered agent Jennings Lang was shot by Walter Wenger for his affair with his wife, actress Joan Bennett. During Lang and Bennett's affair, they used an apartment rented by a low-level employee of Lang. Another element of the script came from Diamond's friend who returned home after a breakup to find that his girlfriend had unalived herself in his bed. The apartment was produced by Wilder and the Mersch Company and filmed on a budget of $3 million. Joseph Lachelle was the cinematographer for the film and Adolf Dish did the music. 
The film's title theme was written by Charles Williams and was originally titled Jealous Lover. The song was first heard in the 1949 film The Romantic Age. A recording of the theme would go on to be recorded and it reached number 10 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart in 1960. Before making the film, writers Wilder and Diamond wanted to make another film with Jack Lemmon after their experience working with him on Some Like It Hot. He was the first and only choice to play the role of C.C. Baxter. Paul Douglas was Wilder's first choice to portray Sheldrake. But after Douglas died unexpectedly, Fred McMurray was cast in the role. According to McMurray, he was accosted by fans for making a dirty, filthy film. Prior to the film, McMurray didn't play the wholesome roles that he would be known for in the 60s and 70s, but he didn't usually play the villain either, from what he was known for at the time, and it worked in the favor of the production. Billy Wilder generally required his actors to stick to the script, but he trusted Lemon and allowed him to improvise two scenes in the film. Wilder is quoted as saying that happiness is working with Jack Lemon. They would go on to work together seven times. Art director Alexandra Troner used forced perspective to create the set of a large insurance company office. Few smaller people and desks were placed at the back of the room, ending up with children as extras in the back. Cubicles weren't actually invented until the 1960s, and the designer of the cubicle was Robert Probst, who created this workspace in an attempt to give employees more freedom. So before the invention of the cubicles, like what we see in the film, the desks are basically like an assembly. For Baxter's apartment, he used thrift store items and some of Wilder's own furniture. This makes Baxter's apartment look like an actual working man's apartment. It is not staged to look pretty and it is made to look more practical. The apartment was made for $3 million and it went on to make $24.6 million at the box office. Billy Wilder garnered three more nominations at the Academy Awards, winning all three of them. Best Film, Di Best Director, and Best Original Screenplay with IAL Diamond. The film also won Best Art Direction and Editing. Lemon McLean and Jack Crushin, who played Dr. Dreyfus in the film, were all nominated. Joseph Lachelle was nominated for Best Cinematography, and Gordon E. Sawyer was nominated for Best Sound. A musical adaptation of The Apartment was made in 1968 titled Promises, Promises. The musical ran for five years until 1972 and was revived in 2010. The film starts with Jack Lemmon doing a voiceover as C.C. Baxter. As we look over New York, Baxter tells us about himself and spits out various facts about the city and world. These are facts that he knows because he works in insurance. One of the things he mentions is that he pays $85 a month for his apartment, not too far from Central Park. Today, that $85 amounts to approximately $858.09 today. But according to Rentop, the average monthly rental price for one-bedroom apartments in the Upper West Side is $4,070 and an average price per square feet of $75.21. There's also mention of cabs and the pricing of cabs at this time. And one mention is 85 cents, which would equate to $8.58 today. He pays the cabbie $1, which would equate to $10.09. When one of the characters dates mentions being owed money for the cab, it is 45 cents, and this equates to $4.54 today. I think they're just going around the corner. Can't be much of that. I find I haven't taken a cab in a really long time, but cabs are expensive <laughs> and also you can't like even get an apartment in any city outside of New York for that much like maybe you could get like if you want to sleep in a match book or something you could afford that but definitely apartments in New York one bedroom apartments in New York are way more than eight hundred and fifty eight dollars and nine cents Louis Giannetti points out that Lemon's character represents a basic conflict in Wilder's cinematic world. He's both a schnook and an opportunist, a victim and a victimizer. But in the end, he prefers being a mensch to being a swine. 
He's Wilder's portrait of a loser as a winner, with more class than he realizes. New York Times film critic Bosley Crowther, who called the film gleeful, tender, and even sentimental, and Wilder's direction as ingenious, loved the film, and he wasn't the only one. The film won the hearts of the audience. The apartment did have its detractors, however, with Esquire critic Dwight MacDonald calling the film a paradigm of corny avant-gardism. The apartment was dismissed by some due to its depictions of infidelity. The Saturday Review critic Hollis Elper called it a dirty fairy tale, and I don't really know if that's meant to be a burn or it's actually him, you know, giving some respect to the picture. I think it's a good review personally, but I don't know if that was um, Elper's intention. Today, many critics put this film along with their personal faves. Roger Ebert gave the film four out of four stars, adding it to his great movie list. An excerpt from Roger Ebert's July 22nd, 2001 review of The Apartment reads, The screenplay executed as a precise balance between farce and sadness has been constructed by Wilder and IAL Diamond to demonstrate that while Baxter and Miss Kublik may indeed like each other, may feel genuine feelings of the sort that lead to true love, they are both slaves to the company's value system. He wants to be the boss's assistant, she wants to be the boss's wife. And both of them are so blinded by the concept of boss that they can't see Mr. Sheldrake for the untrusty rat that he is. Both Baxter and Kublik, played by McLean, are being used by Sheldrake. There is selfishness in what they are both doing, but they are also both victimized by this man. The apartment pinpoints a moment in Baxter's life where he sets his own morals aside in order to get ahead. Wilder is critical of Sheldrake, but he's also critical of the decisions made by both Baxter and Kublik. As the audience, we are meant to sympathize with them both. We are also here to recognize that they are themselves doing something wrong. Capitalism is an economic and political system in which countries trade and industry are controlled by private owners for profit. A growth of consumerism led to what some refer to as the golden age of capitalism. This was a period between 1945 to 1973 that also marked a labor movement. From 1953 to 1961, the federal income tax was 91% for the highest income bracket. And from a modern point of view, capitalism of the 50s and 60s looks like an ideal in comparison to capitalism today. Though we can't forget that Western capitalism bred Jim Crow laws and fed lingering colonialism. In the apartment, Baxter works at an insurance company. During this period, insurance sales were going up, and by 1965, more than half of Americans had some form of health insurance package. Modern capitalism was molded by the decisions of Reagan and Thatcher. Their decisions lifted the rich, broke down the middle class, punished the working class, and the poor. While the capitalism in 2024 is different than capitalism in 1959, the apartment still had something to criticize, and what it speaks to criticizes capitalism as it is today as well. Common criticism of capitalism is that it leads to the unbalanced distribution of wealth that does not benefit the laborer. By working hard, Baxter has not progressed at work. His progression comes in when he does something that shows greater benefit to his bosses. It is mentioned by Sheldrake that Baxter works overtime without pay while his bosses use his apartment for their affairs. They are continuously benefiting from Baxter's ambition to move up the ladder in more ways than one. And when he doesn't show them complete loyalty after getting up the ladder a bit more and becoming an executive assistant, they essentially turn their backs on him in a way. It's because the underdog is always an underdog to a capitalist and in a capitalist system. The apartment was released in 1960, and while many things have changed over the years, the effects of capitalism remained, and capitalism doesn't seem to be showing any signs of slowing down. Though newer generations, like millennials and Gen Z, are starting to be more openly critical of the effects of capitalism. Even from a 2024 perspective, we see people doing what they can to survive. Today, we are still met with people who believe that the ultimate dream is to be wealthy or to be the boss, 
but not to be rich in other ways and in the ways that you as the individual desire. By the end, both Baxter and Kublik are in a better place, but they still have further to go. Even then, they are far richer than they were at the beginning of the apartment, just not in the financial sense, and that's all because of their realizations. By the end of it all, they are in Baxter's apartment, and the final lines as uttered by Shirley MacLaine, they simply say, shut up and deal. Billy Wilder and I.A. Diamond criticize capitalism by magnifying the reality that no one wins. The final moment of the apartment closes a chapter in the lives of C.C. Baxter and Frank Kublik. In their next chapter and in the new year, they will enter the new life together. It is up to interpretation by the audience what will be next for them as individuals and as a couple, but we do have some clues. We know that Baxter and Kublik both need new jobs, Baxter quit, but we also know that they are far more confident they were at the beginning of this. As they know, they've both made some great decisions for themselves and they both have each other. It's not this ending that goes to a walk in the sunset where everything's all dandy and it's this big ol' happy ending. But this is an ending that both Baxter and Fran needed to enter the next phase of their life. Like real life, there is no clo there is no true ending. We're constantly going through phases of our life and chapters in our life. And that's what we are seeing here for these characters, especially for both Baxter and Kublik. Thank you so much for taking a moment in this phase of your life to watch my thoughts on the apartment and how capitalism and how the apartment criticizes capitalism. I have been wanting to talk about the apartment for some time, for some time now. I just wasn't sure how I wanted to go about it and I felt that I want to talk more and more about Billy Wilder and Billy Wilder's films, but I, I thought it was time to, to talk about The Apartment. If you have any thoughts about The Apartment and how it criticizes capitalism or just in general, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. I'm really excited for everything that I've got planned for the new year. I've got a schedule set out for January, February, and March but I will still take any recommendations or things that you would like to just see on the channel moving forward. And I'm really looking forward to a new year of growth, especially growth here on The Quiet Riot. And if you have anybody that you think would be interested in this channel, please feel free to share. I would really appreciate it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe and ring that bell to be notified every single time we post. Thank you so much. Happy New Year, and I'll see you next time. Bye.